Hey everybody, Pastor Ryan, the Roving Giant here. Uh, it is Friday, March 23rd, a little after 1.30, and I am heading out for a hike today. Uh, I'm going to head into the woods here at Carlton Hill State Forest. I'm off the Finger Lakes Trail this time, and uh, I'm just doing some exploring. Got a quick overnight trip, nothing special, not going on a big hike, but uh, I like to get out and uh, tonight's a good night to get out. It's gonna be nice as ever. I think the temperature is gonna be in the low 30s for most of the day, and uh, we will probably get into the low 20s at night. It's gonna be warm, it's gonna be nice, the snow's gonna be melting, it should be pretty out there. Um, not going too far on the hike, and I'm not really sure where I'm gonna go. I'm just starting to hike from this point, and uh, gonna see where I find a good spot to camp, and when we're at camp, I do have a surprise for you. So stick around for that, and uh, I got a fun activity, camp activity for us to try. So stay with me on the trail. Here we go. Hey, thanks for coming out with me on this trip. Um, something that I do is I try to get out in the woods a minimum of one night a month. Some months I can get out more than one night. I can get out a whole bunch and uh, really enjoy the, the season. But man, March has been a busy, busy month. No problem, busy's good, all good busy stuff, but sometimes it makes it tricky to get out here. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, sometimes getting out here isn't so much a joy as a chore, but I'm thoroughly convinced that it's worth it, even when I don't always feel like it. I didn't really feel like trying to squeeze this trip in I'm not able to really enjoy it. I'm coming out here on a Friday afternoon at like two. I'm gonna be out here for about two hours tops. And then I have to go back out of the woods, take care of some business. And then I'm gonna come back in to the spot that I set up and uh, camp out for the night, but leave probably about 7, 7.30 a.m. to get back for more work that I gotta do when I get back. Here's the thing though, I may be squeezing it in, but it's still worth being out here. Every little bit of woods time helps to cleanse the soul a little bit. And If I'm too busy to fit one night a month in, then I am too busy. But there's some cool parts to this trip. I'm working my way up this hill. This is all an area that I have not been before. I have no map. I just have my GPS. I'm not far from home though. I've told some people where I am and I'm just exploring. I am following a trail so far, but I don't need to stick to the trail. Um, 
I know how big the woods are. I know where the perimeter roads are. So I'm not worried about getting lost or anything. People know where I should be and when I should be there. Oh, sorry, catching my breath. You can tell it's been a month. <laughs> um, but this is Carlton Hill State Forest, which is here in Wyoming County, uh, my home county here. And uh, mostly used for hunting land, but there's horse trails and hiking trails and fields. It's, it's kind of a beautiful region, beautiful forest. And this is my first time getting a chance to really explore it. I'll show you the, the trail marker here. Um, my plan <clears throat> is to go along this trail for a little while and just find a nice spot to camp. Once I find a nice spot to camp, I'll set up my hammock, set up my tarp, make my way back to the truck and, and go take care of the business I need to take care of. And then when I come back after that, what I plan to do is do a little test. I saw some folks on YouTube, uh, I saw Joe Robinette do this and I saw Scrambled O try it and I thought I'd give it a try. I thought I'd try a one stick fire. So what I'll have is I'll have one log that I harvest myself out here in my ferro rod, plus any, uh, what would you call it, uh, any tinder that I need to collect. But with the exception of those particular pieces of equipment or materials, that is all I have. Um, so I will do my best to start a fire with just one stick and the materials that I can find in the woods plus my ferro rod. So, who knows, maybe I'll fail. <laughs> Never actually done it, so uh, should be fun. Well, I think I've found the spot that I want to camp. If you look down this uh, pond slash riverbed, there's some uh, evergreen trees way down at that end. I'm gonna go check that out, see if there's some cool spots to hang, because there's a whole bunch of hardwood surrounding it. And if there's hardwoods, that means there's good firewood for the one stick fire. And uh, we'll try that spot out, see how it looks. So I want to give you a little review of how I set up my hammock. So here's the strap. The strap goes around and connects on a beaner clip here just like this. It just loops around. This makes it easy to move the strap up and down the tree as you need it. Um, below that, so you're following that tree line down, and right below here is this little toggle on a knot that that knot is called a marlin spike hitch. And what it does is it makes it, it's a simple little knot. Um, I'll figure out a way to show you on camera. I can't do it with just one hand, but the concept on this knot is that this little loop sits right on top of the knot. There. So the pressure from the hammock pulls smooth object that can withstand a little bit of compression force and the whole knot comes out with a simple pull of that loop. Now it's gone. Let me show you how to tie it. So here's how you tie a marlin spike hitch. You take your webbing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it around my finger and I'm going to get both of my fingers through that twist. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach through and I'm going to grab the other line here and pull that line through. So now I'll see my finger is sticking through this knot. My finger's acting like the toggle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the toggle right in where my finger was and it closes that knot up, allowing this to just sit on that knot. Then, if I want to take it out, I just take the, the hitch out and voila, there she goes. 
So now that I've got that Marlin spike hitch tied on here, and I've got it on the same on this tree over here, I can take my hammock, which I've attached with this hook. And I can take it out of the bag and start unrolling it. This helps it to not get all covered in snow as I'm trying to get the hammock out. The hammock has this ridge line here that goes across the top. This ridge line is here to make sure that the hammock sags the same way every single time because with a, a proper sag, you're able to lay nice and flat in the hammock before the wind takes it away. I'm going to hook it on here and what I can do is with my whoopee sling here, I can pull it nice and tight. Now the wind's obviously trying to take it away from me, but what I can do is once I have this hammock set at the right spot, right where I want it, then I'll be able to set my tarp up above it. So see how this ridge line is a little bit loosey-goosey? What that tells me is that I need to pitch the hammock a little bit flatter. So I can do that one of two ways. I can tighten it and raise it up like this, which will tighten that ridge line. And I can lower the hammock on the tree while tightening which helps to get that ridge line right down where I want it. So now it has a little bit of tension. What you want in a ridge line is to have tension, but not a lot. You don't want it to be holding your whole hammock up, but you want it to be tight, setting the hammock in the right position. So you can lay at a nice diagonal like this. I'm going to stay here for a little while. So the next thing that I'm going to put on is this. This is my under quilt. And on a day like today, the wind is blowing across my hammock. So I'm going to pitch the tarp this way to hold the wind back. But what this under quilt will do is as the wind blows under my hammock, sucks the heat out from under me. So a hammock, you can think of it kind of like a bridge. You know how bridges get icy before uh, the regular road does? It's because that air is flowing under the bridge. And that makes it so that the bridge itself ends up getting cold. So since there's air flowing under a hammock, the bottom side of the hammock gets freezing cold. So we use this. This is an under quilt. This one's made by Hammock Gear. This is the Hammock Gear Incubator Zero Degree Under Quilt. And what we do, we hook it on on one side of the hammock and you hook it on on the other. And the whole thing will lay right up under the hammock. The name is very suiting. It's a quilt and it under the hammock. Hence, under quilt. As I lay in the hammock, the under quilt will hang under me and provide insulation under me to keep me nice and toasty throughout the night. And now, for the, besides wearing a sleeping bag, I'll put a sleeping bag over my feet and hang it over my body. And then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tarp here. And the tarp will lay, lay at an angle just like this, blocking that wind from coming across me. And I'll stay toasty warm all night on a warm night like tonight. 
So here's my tarp. My tarp has something here. This is called a wasp. It's made by Dutchware Gear. He makes hammock hardware, which is a pretty cool little piece of equipment. Because what I'm able to do is tie this uh, tarp onto the tree, no knots. So check it out. So I'm going to try to show you how this wasp operates. So what I've done is I've woven my zingit, which is the name of this line, and I've woven it through this little hole around the tail, through this second hole in the chest, and out that far side. Then it goes all the way around the tree and comes around to here. Now what I do here, is I come into the hook, and I pull it tight, as tight as I want it to pull it. At which point, I wrap around the antenna, and then around the wing, and lock it. The end. The whole thing is tight, taut, no knots whatsoever. I want to take the whole thing out, pop it out that way, comes loose. So you pull it tight, around the antenna, hook it into the tail, or into the wings, and you're good to go. So the next step in setting up my tarp is staking it out. So I've attached some zingit line to some hard stakes. In the winter, I like to use these heavier stakes. They're really heavy, but when I drill these into the frozen ground, they don't end up getting bent on me like the other stakes do. So um, that's why I use the heavy ones in the winter. But let me grab my tarp here. I'm going to loop my line through. I'm going to loop my I loop my line through the eyelet here on the tarp. I just need to get this little knot out of my line. Shouldn't take too long. There we go. Figure out where I want to get it staked out. You always want to put the stake in at a pretty severe angle because you want the tension to be going directly against how you've staked it. So here's how the knot's going to work. This is called the trucker's hitch. So remember that marlin spike we looped around our fingers? It's the same exact concept here. You loop it around your fingers, go through, grab the upper line, and pull it out. That is straight up the marlin spike hitch. So you've created this little loop. Now, I'm going to take the other end of my line, and instead of putting a toggle through it, I'm putting the line itself through it. Forgive me, there's a lot of wind. So now I'm through the loop, and I have this to pull. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull it nice and tight. This is my first one, so I'm not going to pull it too tight. But here's how I'm going to work this. I'm creating a loop here, and I'm pulling this line through that loop. And I'm able to pull that tight. Now it's pretty much locked. I'm going to pinch down here, and I'm going to pull that tight. So 
and now what you're looking at is a fully set up tarp, hammock, under quilt. And I'll be putting my sleeping bag in there and everything and this is going to be my home for the night. Um, it's a really cool setup. I like the orange. It lets the glow feel really cool in here. Um, it's calm in here and it'll keep it a lot warmer in here having, having this whole setup. So um, that's a wrap for setting up my hammock, setting up my tarp, getting camp started. Um, I probably will hold off on the fire uh, at least until this evening. We'll see if the wind dies down. I don't want to get a fire going if the wind's not going to die down. I can always cook with my cook gear. Um, but if the wind dies down, then we'll, uh, we'll try our one stick fire. So stay tuned. I need to run. Uh, I'll be back shortly. made it back around after taking care of my chores and I'm heading back into camp found a shortcut through this field but oh, I'm gonna just get a feel there's still a little bit of wind but there's not much so I think we're gonna be able to do this one stick fire uh, the afternoon is looking beautiful uh, the sun's been melting snow all day but the temperature's going to start dropping pretty soon, probably within the next hour or two. Um, and as I try to walk, I uh, can feel it melting under my feet. So I'm going to make my way into camp, get my stuff out for getting dinner started, and get my fire prep gloves on, and... We'll get this, uh, get this fireplace made. start processing it and I I, uh, I enjoy starting on the thin end getting a little stuff so it's not flailing everywhere and working my way towards the larger side of the tree so I'm just gonna break this off this is gonna be firewood for later um, after the one stick fire just because one stick fire is a challenge to start a fire but you can't keep it going forever on just one stick. So, bear with me while I uh, process this particular tree. I just heard an owl out in the woods over there. Hopefully this will be a good night.
This has been hollowed out. This may not be the one to work for us. <clears throat> oh, and if you've noticed the shiny stuff sticking out of my pants, um, these uh, Fall Raven Vita Pros have a sleeve in the knees for you to be able to put a pad in there. So I put some Reflectix so that when I kneel down, it doesn't the heat from my knees doesn't melt snow and get my pants all wet. Seems to work really well, it's just every once in a while they slide out. Okay, a little more solid down at this lower end. That's the sound you want to hear. So I think this is going to be my one stick. Here we go. The basics of how this one stick fire works is I'm going to split it down to various sizes. And uh, once it gets down to the different sizes, I will um, trim some of those smaller sizes down and start uh, making feather sticks and such that I can set off with a spark from my ferro rod. I'm in no way trained on any of this. I'm just a hobbyist. I have fun. I mess around in the woods, play with sticks and stuff. Uh, don't assume that I know anything. If you have a, if you know a better way of doing any of the stuff that I'm doing, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below, and I'd love to hear from you. I, there's, I'm always up for learning a new fun way to try something. I'm trying to save every last little bit because it all counts. certain logs split like this. This happens to me a lot where it will go three quarters or maybe two thirds of the way down and then break off. I don't know if it's me or the log. Now, the next step in the process, now that I've got it processed down to these sizes, is to keep going smaller. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to try to take some of these really long ones and start making feather sticks out of the ends of it, because with a long one I have a little bit more stick to hold on to while I make a feather stick, so feather sticks are next. And I'm going to put this piece of Reflectix under me just to catch all the little pieces because I want to save them all. I find feather sticks kind of tricky. I'm often making them too... Uh, the shaving's too thick. But one of these days I'll get better at it. 
Have any tips for me? I think mine look more like actual bird feathers than <laughs> the curly cues I see people doing, but I bet the curly cues actually start a fire better. But it's a feather stick. I'm gonna see if pushing against something solid will work, but I'm guessing I'm gonna to need to split this down. All right, so I'm gonna try it with this. If I don't get it, don't get it. Try again next time. But here's how this is gonna work. I, I'm running low on storage space, so I'll try to keep it quick. I. Uh, I'm going to take these shavings, I'm going to start them there, and I'll add some smaller sticks on top as I go. But the whole thing should start just using my ferro rod. Alright, let's give this booger a go. This may be considered cheating, but I really don't care. I can't get a fire started with uh, if I'm trying to do it straight on snow. So I'm not using pieces of the same log for the base, but whatever. Ah. Come on, Mr. Farrow Rod. Got him. Oh yeah. Come on, buddy. Please be recording. Yes. Come on. Do your thing. Well, hey, I tried. What can you do? Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to start it the cheater way with uh, birch bark. 